What I'll do today is basically focus on commercial applications with insulating concrete forms. I'm going to start first by taking you through the basics of the systems and the features of the systems. Um, and then we'll talk about the benefits of working with insulating concrete forms. And then we'll touch on some commercial examples that are part of this presentation and share with you uh, a couple of local projects as well a little bit later on. So let's start first with just describing the different components, the parts and pieces of insulating concrete forms. Insulating concrete form walls provide a monolithic structure because you're using a uh, stay in place forming system. So you're filling it with reinforced concrete. So you're getting a continuous wall assembly in most cases with these systems of solid concrete. Add to that insulation on both sides of that concrete wall and then you have with the ties that and let me just grab one of these forms the ties that hold the foam the required distance apart to create the cavity for the placement of the concrete those ties when you remove the foam will have a profile something like this and there are flat ends that typically are recessed below the surface of the foam and those tie ends provide a way to attach finishes directly to the formwork. So now you have a built-in furring system as part of your stay-in-place forming system. And then add to that, you can use the thickness of the foam, that foam insulation, as a chase cavity by cutting out portions of the foam to route your electrical wiring, for example, or small-scale plumbing runs. So you have monolithic structure, you have the insulation from the formwork itself, you have that furring capability from the ties, and the ability to route your utilities within this wall assembly. The history of ICFs, and I know at 8 o'clock in the morning this is a highlight for anybody for this presentation. They were invented in 1946, the product, original product, a product called Durasol, which combined wood waste and cement to create a product that could be stacked on the job site and filled with concrete. And then that wood waste and cement material would stay as part of the wall assembly. In the 1970s, there was an ingenious change to use polystyrene foam, much lighter material much better insulation quality and today virtually all of these systems there are a handful of systems that don't use a polystyrene foam for its forming system most of the systems in the marketplace now feature that type of form um, very strong in the residential market when there was a res residential market um, 1995 about 7 million square feet of residential walls built with insulating concrete forms. That grew by 20-fold in the seven-year period between 1995 and 2002. More recently, ICFs have strongly moved into the commercial market. Um, this theater, for example, was built with insulating concrete forms. Um, there are over 50 ICF manufacturers in North America providing product um, to the marketplace. The components. You have the face shells. As I said, typically polystyrene foam. Most of the polystyrene is expanded polystyrene, like um, um, a coffee cup material. Um, there are a handful of systems in the marketplace that use expanded polystyrene, which is that cellular polystyrene foam um, Supermarket meat trays being an example of cellular polystyrene material. Um, typical thickness for the foam is typically at least two inches thick. Um, this system happens to be two and a half inches thick. Um, steady state R values of from 18 to 22, depending on the thickness of the foam for the product. Um, with the expanded polystyrene systems, you're able to mold the foam into whatever shape you need. So that gives you the capability of creating interlocking edges, for example. 
Um, the XPS systems will be butt edges because you're really not able to mold that product. You can only cut it. You can't mold it. Um, any of these systems are designed so that the face shells can withstand the internal pressure of concrete. So uh, the systems in the marketplace will work very well at holding that wet concrete and letting it cure effectively within the, uh, the formwork. Then you have the form ties, which are typically plastic or they can be metal. Uh, typical spacing is six inches, like this system is a six inch tie spacing. They can be six, they can be eight inches on center, they can be 12 inches on center in some rare cases. Um, one of the nice developments in more recent ICF history has been the creation of uh, saddles or uh, channels to hold reinforcement which reduces the amount of uh, reinforcement ties that have to be installed so it, it um, reduces the amount of time spent assembling these forms and the reinforcement on the job site. So you have rebar chairs um, with some systems the chairs can be deep enough that even your lap splices when you have two bars that come together your lap splices can be accommodated with those tie saddles. Uh, again, reducing the amount of ties, uh, tying manually. As you set your reinforcement. And then you have the form tie face. With most systems today, that tie face will be recessed slightly below the surface of the foam. I'm going to go out here on the catwalk so you gentlemen and ladies can see me as well. I feel like Juliet. Um, so you have these um, tie surfaces that typically are recessed below the surface of the foam. Now we don't have really great lighting in this room, so you may have to trust me on this one. Um, when you have a moment during one of our breaks, you can take a look at the surface of the block and you'll see, typically you'll have an embossed symbol to help your drywall contractor, for example, or whoever is installing finishes on this product. So they're able to identify the locations of the ties so they can effectively attach their finishes directly to the surface of the foam.